this morning i'm going to be talking about i'll start talking about how tithing christians prosper how tithing christians prosper but this morning my main subject is tithing and the presence of god tithing and what the presence of god how tithing christians prosper and under that i'm talking about tithing and the presence of god so how does god take somebody who pays his tithe how does he take him and make him a prosperous person how does he take him and make him a prosperous person jacob himself he said to god god i don't want to be confused at all i don't want to be confused at all if you are going to prosper me i want i want some things to look out for so he said in verse 20 genesis 20 verse 20 he says and jacob found the vow saying if god will be with me he says god must be with me and if god is with me i will know because when he says that if god will be with me all he was referring to is that i know that god is with me i know that god is for me and for we those in the new testament we know that god is in us but he said god can be in you god can be for you and god can also be with you but you may never see his manifest presence we have electricity here how do we know that the electricity is here because you have put on the lights the speakers and things are functioning assuming you enter the chapel and the lights were off and the machines and everything were off and you couldn't hear a thing you could think that maybe there is no electricity until you put on the switch and then the light comes on and until you turn on all the machines then will you know that there's electricity here but the fact that we didn't turn on the light and that we didn't turn on the machines did not mean that there was no electricity we just did not turn it on and in the same way god can be in you god can be for you and god can be with you and yet there is nothing that shows that god is with you so jacob said if god will be with me so he said by saying that he said if god's presence will be manifest if god's presence will be tangible to me i believe in this prosperity package that god um, had promised to give unto me now so when god is with you how will you know the presence of god how can you tell that god is with you you know well, let me use let me use one scripture one verse of scripture this morning as a yardstick in psalm 16 verse 11 psalm 16 verse 11 psalm 16 we are talking about tithing and the presence of god tithing and the presence of god psalm 16 verse 11 it says for thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and at thy right hand pleasures evermore so he says that once god is with a person there are three things you can expect the first thing is that when god is with somebody he says god is going to lead the person in the path of life the path of life there speaks about the perfect will of god so once god is with you he's going to lead you into all of his perfect will once god is with a person he will lead him into all of his perfect will i pray that the presence of god will be manifest with you also in the name of jesus let your neighbor see that god is with you let your brother see that god is with you let everybody in your house notice that the hand of the lord is upon your life how would they know when god leads you and he says that that will show me the path of life now when god is leading you here and he's leading you in the path of life what it means is that you'll always be strong you will, you will never be broken emotionally. You will never be broken mentally. You will always be strong. So he says that that will show me the path of life, the path of vigor, the path of energy, the path of strength, mental strength, emotional strength, physical strength. There will be life inside me. Proverbs 16, 25. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. They say the same thing. There is a way we submit right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So it says that there is a way. It looks right unto a man, but it can lead to the death of the man. Now, death there is not talking about the cessation of life alone or the separation of the spirit from the body. But what he's saying is that you can lose life, vigor, mental strength, emotional strength. 
it, it can leave you. You, you. you can be alive, but it's as if you are dead. You know, some people they eat, but when they are eating, they don't even taste the food because there is no happiness, there is no joy, there is sorrow, they are confused, there is no life in them. It, it, it's like a dead person who is eating. When you give food to a dead person, the dead person cannot taste it, cannot do it. I mean, it, 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 the food is tasteless to the person. And so you can get to a place where when you step out of the will of God, you enter into the place of death. So when Jacob said, if God will be with me, all he was saying is that if God's presence will be with me. So then let's now begin to look at um, these three things in the life of Jacob when God began um, to manifest his presence to him. Genesis 29. Genesis um, 29. Reading from the verse number one. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the sheep, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. Tita were all the sheep. Tita were God. Tita were all the sheep or all the flocks gathered together. Or the Tita were all the flocks gathered. And the Bible says, when the flocks gathered like that, they rolled away the stone from the wall's mouth and watered the sheep and put again the stone upon the wall's mouth in his place. So Jacob didn't know where he was going to. He had never been to Laban's house before. He didn't know Laban's children. He had not seen the first one before. He hadn't seen the second one before. He hadn't seen the third one. He doesn't know any of them. He didn't even know the place where he was going to. So as, as soon as he finished the, entering into the covenant with God, the Bible says he, he went on his journey. And when he went on his journey, he just kept walking and walking. And he reached the place. When he lifted his eyes, he saw a well, I mean, ahead of him. And by this well, there were three flocks of sheep. Of course, it means that the shepherds were also there. And these three flocks of sheep were by this well. And a big stone upon, was upon the well's mouth. And he understood that when the sheep gather around the well like that, they are waiting for the stone to be rolled away. Then the water is fetched. And they are fed, you know, with the water. They are given the water. And then from there, um, they, they move on. When he got to the place and, and he saw the people like that, in verse 4, and Jacob, he said unto them, Whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we? And they said, he said, Where are you people from? And he said, Of Haran. Haran was Padan Aram. Haran was Mesopotamia, where Laban, where he had been sent to, was actually staying. He had not been there before. But here was God directing him, leading him, and he led him to the people who had access and knew the place exactly where he was going to. God was leading him because his presence was with him. When God is with you, he will lead you. He will lead you into all of his, of, of his perfect will. Verse 5. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor. And they said, we know him. He said, do you know Laban? He said, oh, Laban. Oh, we've been drinking tea with him yesterday. We're even at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC, Asakumono 18 Junction. I mean, just yesterday. We know him like, uh, I mean, it's not a serious, it's not, it's not, a, you, know, you don't have a problem. We, we know him. The guy, you know, he's close to us. Meanwhile, Jacob had not seen him before in a long time. Jacob didn't know. I mean, he didn't know how Laban even looked like. I'm sure, and, and, he, and he had not been there in a long time. I didn't, didn't know anything about, about Haran, but here was he, God was directing him. Look, as you continue to tithe and you remain dedicated to tithing, the Lord himself will be directing your hand. I said, God himself will be leading you everywhere you go. If you believe, shout a big amen. Put your hands together for Jesus again this morning. Six is there. Is he well? And they said, Oh, he is well. Behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. They said, Hey, you're asking if he is well? He is more than well. And I, I, I mean, as if it was a shock, I am sure to Jacob, they said, Rachel is just about to appear with the father's sheep. Said, Rachel, his daughter, 
cometh with the sheep. So when God led uh, uh, Jacob, he led him you know, to the people that he needed to know. And he was also leading him to the place where he needed to be. I pray that God himself will hold your hand this year and be leading you in the name of Jesus. I said, I pray that God himself will hold your hand this year and be leading you in the name of Jesus. Now listen, when God is leading you in his perfect will as you tithe, two things will happen to you. When God is leading you himself, two things will happen to you. You will meet the right people for your life. You will meet the right people. There are some human beings you must not meet in life. And there are some human beings you also need to meet in life. And there are some people who you shouldn't meet. If you meet them, by the time they are leaving you, they would have stolen from you, they would have broken you, they would have finished you, you would have been down. And there are some people too, by the time you are leaving them or they are leaving you, they would have lifted up your hand and taken you to a level you never were before. I pray that this year, God himself will lead you to the right people. May the Lord lead you to the right people. May you never meet anybody you are not supposed to meet in the name of Jesus. Some girl who you shouldn't marry. Some man who you shouldn't marry. Some man you shouldn't do business with. Some girl you shouldn't do business with. Somebody who shouldn't be your friend. May you never meet them in Jesus' name. But then there are some people too. You need them. God must make you meet them. Because after you have met them, they will help you to stand on your feet such will be your story in the name of jesus because after you are standing on your feet you will also be empowered to help other people to also stand on their feet when god is leading you he will take you to the right people so jacob was brought to the right people these were people who knew the place where he was going to then number two they also knew the man he was looking for there are some human beings here, when you meet them, they will make you meet the next person in the chain you have to meet. And make you meet the next person you need to meet in the chain. And make you meet the next person you need to meet in, meet in the chain. And by the time you realize, they are handing over to one person, to another person, to another person. And by the time you realize, you are exactly where God wanted you to be. That will be your story in Jesus' name. Clap your hands together well for the Lord. So, you have to know when God is leading you. He will lead you to the right people. People you could even chat with. People you haven't met before. Look at what began to happen in verse 7. He said, it is yet high day. He says, the, the day the sun has not yet set. Uh, it is neither is it yet time. Or neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. It says, water ye the sheep and go and feed them. And they said unto him, we cannot. We cannot until all the flocks be gathered. Uh, until they roll the stone from the wall's mouth. Then shall we water, you know, the sheep. The Bible says in verse 9. And while he yet talked with them. While he yet spake with them. It says, behold. No, not behold. It says, while he yet spake with them. Rachel came with the father sheep for she kept them so whilst he was just starting with them the exact person they were telling him about earlier the person also walks to come and meet them i pray that this year the right people you will meet them by the lotto kiosk you will meet them in your area just when you're about to bend the curve you meet the right person just at your station when you're about to enter the throttle you'll meet the person you are looking for receive that grace from god in the name of jesus it's a good place to clap your hands together for the lord And it came to pass. Verse 10. Are you, are you following the scripture so far? Verse 10. And it came to pass. When Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's uh, brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone uh, 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 away from the wall's mouth. And what did he do? He watered the sheep. He watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother and jacob kissed rachel the bible says that we should greet one another with holy kisses if we should be kissing one another right now i don't think that they, <laughs> it will not be good at all <laughs> some people will turn the curse into sleeping by the time you realize pregnancy all over the place 
but this one was a holy brother and sister kiss so jacob kissed rachel and lifted up his voice and wept now you see now what i want to the, the second thing about god leading you is that he brings you to the right place at the right time the right place at the right time you have to be at the right place. you have to be at the right place at the right time and when god is leading you he will make sure that you are at the right place at the right time jacob got to the well exactly at the time that um, rachel was about to come if he had delayed a bit the shepherds would have left and rachel would have also come with the sheep fed uh, watered the sheep i mean and left and he would have left that, that night also frustrated he would have gone into that night also frustrated but when god is leading you he will make you be at the right place at the right time right place geographically it's not every place that you can stay and it is not every place that you should stay there are some places you should never stay there but god must be the one directing you there are some places you know if god says that you will stay there you will stay there nobody can do anything i'm in the church one day i told the people in my area as for me god brought me into the area where well, they had gathered at some meetings or whatever i told them that god brought me into the area if you take this house away from me you organize bulldozers to come and break it down god will give me another one there is no fear at all because i didn't build it myself it was god and there are, there, are, there are people who don't understand that there are places where God has put them. It is God that makes you stay where you are. And, and nobody, and when God places you at a place, there is nothing a man can do to remove you. I pray that you be so established in your house, so established in your marriage, so established with your children, so established with your business, that nothing can remove you. If you believe, shout a big amen. So when God is with you, you will be at the right place, at the right time, right place, right time. You will never miss again. You will never miss your appointment with God again. I didn't hear you, amen. I said you will never miss your appointment with God again. After today, God himself will be holding your hand and leading you. Number two. When God's presence is with you, another thing you must expect is joy, the fullness of joy. Another thing that shows that God is with you is that he will give you the fullness of joy. He will give you the what? The fullness of joy. Now listen, joy is different from happiness. Happiness is, happiness is excitement that comes after you have experienced some good. So when a child has just eaten heavy, the stomach is bloated. And you know, when we're young, when we are eating and they ask us, are you satisfied? We say, no. They say, ah, why? They say, we said the food is here. So what do you want the food to reach? I want it to reach here. And you eat heavy until you feel that the food is here, almost about to come out of your mouth. And you are happy. As soon as you are hungry, you are sad again. But joy is an emotional excitement that results from what God has done and from the hope of what God is about to do. So it means that at all times, you are joyful. <laughs> Clap your hands together for the Lord. At all times, you are what? Joyful. All times. All times. All times. Receive the grace to be joyful at all times. Verse 11 says, And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. It was tears of joy. Tears of joy that alas, I have met her. I have met somebody who will take me to the house of Laban. My journey has been sweat free. It was tears of joy. And Jacob told Rachel, 12, and Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was the son of Rebekah. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, 
his sister's son that he ran are we in 13 now that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to the house and jacob told laban all these things jacob entered into the joy of the lord i pray for somebody today that as you make up your mind that you'll be tithing i pray that your life will be filled with joy joy receive the joy of the lord this morning and joy is a fruit of the spirit joy comes from inside it's not it's not a mental thing joy comes from the inside it's always within it's inside deeply rooted within that's why in uh, galatians 5 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy joy is a fruit of the spirit and joy comes because of what god has done jacob was happy because he had met um, rachel the daughter of laban the man to whom he was going to his uncle then again he was happy and they were both happy I mean in verse 13 when they embraced when they kissed one another and they embraced and he brought Jacob to the house and Jacob told the Laban all these things it was also joy that gradually I am getting there what, what my father said to me that I should come and marry you know from the house of, of, of this man he says it's coming to pass and more joy flooded the heart of Jacob joy you want to know true joy Look, I meet people all the time. I meet people all the time. Sometimes, you know, one day I, I, I met a woman who was driving, I, I've, I've even forgotten the made of the car, but it was a four by four, air condition, whatever. And she was in the car and she was weeping. So she rolled down the glass and I started talking to her. We, we spoke and all that. She came out of the car. And then, then the husband came and was saying that I've given her a car and whatever. And she took the key. She took the key of the car and hit the, the key like a, 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 a football and said, car my foot, car my foot. Because you can have a car, but there is no joy. You can live in a house, but there is no joy. You can be married, but there is no joy. You can have children, 20, but there is no joy. You can be walking around, have a big salary, but there is no joy. There is emptiness inside you. You don't feel happy. You, you don't feel okay. It, it, there is no fulfillment. Nothing is working. Oh, but the man who pays his tithe. I said, but the man who pays his tithe, he'll be joyful all the time. He will abide in the joy of the Lord all the time. I pray that this joy of the Lord will intoxicate you in the name of Jesus. That everybody around you will become intoxicated with the joy. Money cannot buy it. No level of education can give you that certificate of joy. I've never seen a, certificate, a school where they have given a certificate. We are giving a certificate of joy to uh, Mr. Soswa and so that from today, joy will follow you. We are giving a Clenham certificate of joy from the University of Ghana from today. Joy will follow you the rest of the day. Then she came and then she, she was smiling and then they gave joy to her. I've never seen one before. No school can give you joy. Your mother can also not give you joy. The person who can give you joy is God. David said, and satisfy me with the joy of thy salvation. When you have joy, you wake up in the morning, you are looking at the day with hope. You are looking at the day with joy. There is no sadness. I'm preaching everybody here this morning and those watching online may the joy of the lord enter your home in the name of jesus i said may the joy of the lord enter your home in the name of jesus if you believe shout a big amen this dawn this dawn i was singing yahweh you are worthy of our praise oh you are worthy of our praise when i checked the time it was four minutes to 1 a.m as i was singing and praising god walking in the bedroom and praising god is the doing of the lord man cannot give you that joy i said man cannot give you that joy 
oh people it's better to walk with god when you walk with god there is joy inside you joy like a river flowing out of you i mean happiness like a river flowing out of you all the time there is some excitement coming from within nobody can tell where it is coming from but it is bubbling and coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out and you can never be sad or sorrowful for even one minute i'm preaching receive the joy of the lord it's another good place again to clap your hands together for the lord so philippians 4 4 paul said rejoice again i say rejoice receive the joy of the lord to be singing all the time When people are sad, they sing dirges. They sing dirges. They are gospel songs that are also dirges. It won't be long. We will be going home. You and who will be going home? You will go alone. You and who are going home? It won't be long. <laughs> we'll be going home. You and who are going? You are going alone. Say, ah, it will be long. I will go alone. Go alone. When people are sad, they sing songs that remind them of heaven. <laughs> but when they are happy, they sing Shatawale song. But you see, when the joy of the Lord is inside you, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, 19, it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns and spiritual song singing and making melody in your heart unto the lord unto the lord you'll be singing in your heart unto the lord joy like a river joy like a river joy like a river in my soul joy like a river joy like a river joy like a river in my soul So people are saying that Jesus will come next year. We are, we are waiting for him. <laughs> we are waiting for him. When people are sad, they say that we wish Jesus will come next month. We are waiting. We are ready. We are ready. We are waiting for him. I'm preaching. Turn to somebody. Tell the person the joy of the Lord is your portion. This morning, everybody is going with an intravenous infusion of joy. Receive the joy of the Lord. There will be joy in your house. There will be joy in your office. There will be joy in your school. There will be joy everywhere you go. You will be smiling and laughing and lifting up your voice and praising the Lord. If you believe, shout, I believe. Clap together for Jesus again. Wow. Joy. So in thy presence is fullness of joy so when god is with you another thing he will give you is joy 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 this joy will be the portion of everybody and number three he said and at thy right hand pleasures forevermore he's talking about the favor of god number three when god is with you as you tithe the favor of god will rest upon you may you be a daughter of favor May you be a son of favor. I said, may you be a daughter of favor. May you be a son of favor. Recently, I was using Google Map to try to locate my house. And then I, I, was, I was giving a direction to somebody to come. And when I saw, my house was called the house of favor. I asked everybody in the house, who turned the name? I don't know who turned the name. But even if it's an angel or somebody who did it, it's good. Because the house is called the house of favor. May your house also be called a house of favor. Amen. Oh, you say amen. I say, may your house be called a house of favor. Amen. Where are we now? Verse 14. Genesis 29, verse 14. Genesis 29, verse 14. Jacob, Laban said unto Jacob, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him a space of um, a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, he says, Thou art my brother, and shouldest thou serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? 
Are we following? Why we now? Is it verse 15? Verse 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah was tender eyed. There are some ladies, their beauty is in their eyes. When you see their eyes, you fall in love with them. I'm not the one saying it, though. We are reading the word of God. See, Leah, when she was tender eyed. That's how you put their eyes. When you see their eyes, it's hot. <laughs> their eyes are hot. Oh, it's not true. <laughs> he says, so he says that Leah was tender eyed. He said, but Jacob, but Rachel was fair, was very beautiful, and uh, well favored of God. So he says that Rachel, as for her, she was beautiful. So there are some people they have outward beauty, but there are some people too. The beauty is in their eyes. Ask your neighbor, where is your beauty? <laughs> I'm preaching. <though. laughs> Next time somebody sees you and tells you that you're no fine, tell the person my, my fineness a day inside. A day inside. You know, sometimes as a man, I look at my body, I say, if I were to be a girl, no, I don't think any man will marry me. But it's not true. <laughs> it's not true at all. Every woman, every man in this world, somebody, they like him. Yes. Haven't you seen sometimes, you see some people, and you're like, hey, but this guy, what did he see? <laughs> what at all did he see? <laughs> the beauty, no, hey, it's mysterious. Very, very mysterious. Some have it outside, some, but the best. Look, inward beauty is, is nicer. It's nicer. Outward beauty is nothing. It fades over time. It fades over time. I mean, your hips can begin to change as you grow older. Your buttocks. Ah. It's amazing. Yeah. One day I looked at my mother's picture when she was young. I was surprised. So I asked mama, mama, what happened to you? <laughs> I said, what happened to you? She said, get out of here. <laughs> but it's true. Outward beauty, it fades over time. But as for inward beauty, it remains. It's my last thing. So Leah was standard eyed. It was inside. I mean, Jacob, um, Rachel had it on the outside. And Jacob loved Rachel. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And, J- and Laban said unto him, I will give her to you. It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed to him like a few days for the love that he had to her. This is deep love. Seven years were just like a few days. Look, sisters, put a high price on your body. A man who hasn't paid dowry over your body has no business chopping you. Excuse my language. <laughs> and sometimes everybody is tempted, though. Everybody's tempted. We say body no get feelings. Body, it has feelings. Look, sometimes when you see people, you see some women. You know, sometimes having to realize, you see some man and his wife, they are just walking as if they don't know what love is. Then they have one child, then they have two children, then they have three children. How did the children happen? How did they happen? Do you think they were just praying in the house? Morombi de te, le bon diente, le bon diente. Then God said, there's a baby in the baby's court. Then they went to pick the baby. They did something. They have feelings. Look at, that, look at the sister, the way she's looking at me. I'm here, she does that. Everybody has feelings. People were in the UK, they were running to come home, to, to come back home, coming to love. Oh, man. But you see, a man who loves you, who deeply loves you, will not touch you until he has paid your diary. The seven years, they said, he himself volunteered. He said, I don't have sheep. I don't have goat. I don't have uh, cow milk. I don't have cow milk. 
all I have is I'm ordained, I have strength. I can carry Agbelima, I can carry uh, wood, I can carry things. I'm, I'm going to serve you for seven years. Then after the seven years, that's the diary. Give it to me. And it says that the seven years it seemed to him. Sometimes when he carries the thing, I'm tired, and he remembers Rachel. Say, Rachel, baby. He carries the thing and puts it on his head. The love was deep. As for this one that you are there with the girl, then the guy is fingering you, fingering you, kissing you, unholy kissing, and he's, I mean, he's things to your body. You are selling your birthright away. Sisters don't love my message this morning. <laughs> favor. Everybody shout after me the favor of God. Shout it again the favor of God. When the favor of God is upon you, let's look at three things that God did for Jacob because of favor. Number one, he gave him a place to stay for free. He accommodated him. Look, never take some things in life for granted. Don't take... So, Jacob came to stay in Laban's house. He said he stayed there for a month. No rent, no water bill, no light bill, no chop money, no toilet fee, no urinary fee, no baller fee. No, all these bills are bills that people pay. You go to Labadi and see. Somebody stay in the compound house, pays rent, pays light bill, pays water bill, pays toilet fee, pays urinary fee. Sometimes when you say it's an emergency, they say no 50 pesos, no entry. But God, he had it for free. He had a place to stay for free, sleeping for free, eating for free. It's the favor of God. When God favors you, you will not struggle with accommodation. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. You will never hassle for accommodation in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a big amen. I think it's a good place to clap your hands together for Jesus. Everybody hearing me today, may God give you grace to buy a land. Build a house. Move into that house yourself. In the name of Jesus. May you have a roof over your own head. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. Look. I was telling the people in the first service that I have said, I, have, I, have, I personally have felt the pain. You know, if you don't have a house and you are in a compound house, I know the pain it comes with. We moved to Badana in, in 1990 when somebody's house, compound house, there were a lot of people there. We stayed there from 1990 to about 1996. And uh, Bishop started uh, morning devotion in the house every morning. Everybody in the house forgot that people were coming from outside, including the landlady. One day, the landlady, um, I don't know what happened, every morning, as soon as they finished the morning devotion at 5.30, she would start shouting, Gawuga, get out of this house and let all the things that are follow you go with you. We are the things who follow him. Get out of this house and all the things that are following you, let them go with you. Every day for like six months. She doesn't miss a day. She'll wake up and she'll come. The amazing thing is that she'll come to the morning devotion, come and pray. Bishop will lay hands on her, pray for her, and then she'll go and sit down. As soon as everybody leaves the house, then she'll start the screaming. Can we get out of my house and all the things that are following you, let them go with you. We are things. And just around that time, God was gracious and God was good and provided the land as a hotel. Look, when you don't have a place to sleep, you, you can have troubles. And when you're also staying somewhere where you don't know peace, it can worry you. But you see, when you're at a place, you can sleep anytime you want. You wake up anytime you want, which is also not a good thing anyway. It's not good to also be in somebody's house and you just sleep and wake up anytime you want. Wake up and do something. Tend to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, wake up early and do something in your house. Wake up early, do something in your house. But you see, it's a blessing to be in a house where you can sleep, wake up. I mean, and, 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 just, and, just, and just be there. You are not paying light bill, you are not paying water bill. You go under the shower, you just open it. They ask, are you not coming out of the shower? Are you a pregnant woman? 
and you are just there because you are not paying the water bill you are just enjoying the free shower when you start paying the water bill you will see you see that when you enter the shower the bathroom by the time you enter you are coming and say hey what has happened to you you say oh uh, I finished bathing Why? because you are paying water bill light bill some of you leave the fan on in the night you leave the light on in the night you leave the TV on in the night you say it's providing you company in the night wasting electricity But you see, when you have a place to stay, be happy. It's the favor of God. Push your neighbor, tell neighbor, the favor of God rests upon you. Oh, tell the person, the favor of the Lord rests upon you. Everybody here received the blessing of free accommodation in the name of Jesus. Then number two, <laughs> what was the second thing that God did for Jacob in the land of Haran? The second thing he did for him was to give him a good job. He gave him a what? A good job. So in verse 15, in verse 15, um, Laban said to Jacob, He says, Thou art my brother. So dost thou serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? It's a blessing to have a job and to also be given the opportunity to negotiate how much your salary should be. It's a big blessing. So here was Jacob, he didn't go write in any application letter. He didn't send any CV anywhere. But the job came knocking on his door. Then on top they said, you tell us how much you are looking for. By the grace of God, every faithful titer in this church, you will never beg anybody for a job in the name of Jesus. I said you will never beg anybody for a job in the name of Jesus. Jobs will be running after you in Jesus' name. If you believe, shout a big amen. Somebody once told me, he said, oh, so how about me? I don't pay tight, but it is okay for me. And I said, your mother's tight is saving you. Paul said to the Hebrews, he said to them, Levi, the son of Jacob, he was in the loins of Abraham. Abraham, the great grandfather, who gave birth to Isaac, who gave birth to Jacob. He says, Levi was in the loins of Abraham. When Abraham was paying tithe, the tithe was also covering um, Levi. I'll come to talk about that in, in, at some point in this series. Understand that the tithing you pay is not just for you, but it blesses your, the generation after you. Everybody who pays tithe, God blesses the person with a fine job. I, I pray that very soon they will call you into an office and they will tell you that for all the trouble you have encountered in this office, we are giving you double honor. Receive double honor from the Lord in the name of Jesus. Receive double honor from the Lord in the name of Jesus. It's another good place to clap your hands together for Jesus. I see people working in multinational companies. I see people working in high paying companies in the name of Jesus. People will come looking for you. You will not go looking for a job. Your children will have jobs they desire. They will never go begging anybody for a job. Contrasts are coming. Doors of opportunities are coming. Receive that grace from God in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. And then finally, finally, no, but even before then, I, I forgot to tell you that when God blesses you with a house, not just even with a place to stay, but He blesses you with a beautiful family. Blesses you with a beautiful family. I, I never had, since I was born, I mean, we, we never, they were never, they never allowed us to stay anywhere. The only place I've stayed before is in uh, Mrs. Agbazudo's house with the other you know, and it wasn't just a house, it was a home. It was a very good home to me. It's, it's not, it's not the, it's not the building, it's the human beings that make a home. And so sometimes when God is giving you a place to stay, he also has good people also to eat for you. May that one also be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Then number two, we said that he gave him a job. Is that correct? And then number three, when God favors you, he will bless you with a good wife or with a good husband. Mm. The Bible says, the Bible says that Rachel was what? Well favored. That's in the verse 17. Is it verse 17? Verse 17, yes. Genesis 29 verse 17 it says that Rachel was beautiful and well favored. So when Jacob married her, is that not the favor of God? Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22. It says, He findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, 
and obtained favor from the Lord. He that findeth a wife, not a girl. There are some of the women today, they are just girls. They can't cook, they can't wash, they can't lay bed, they can't sweep, they can't scrub, they can't do anything. They are madams. That's a girl. A wife is one who can cook, who can wash, who can lay bed, who can scrub, who can clean, keep her environment clean. That's a wife. A girl can give orders. Hey, have you swept this one? Have you done this one? What they cannot do, they are instructing other people to do. The Bible didn't say that he that findeth a girl findeth a good thing. He said he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. Every single man in the church here, as you pay your tithe faithfully, may God bless you with a woman who will be cooking sumptuous meals for you. Finger licking dishes for you. And in the night, may she be jumping in the bedroom like a shrimp. A shrimp. Every single guy here, may God bless you with a good man to marry you. A man who when you ask him for chop money, he says, oh, go into my account, take how much you need and sort things out. Receive that grace from God in the name of Jesus. <laughs> One day, prophet met a man and uh, the man said, he's looking for a wife. And the prophet said, oh, they are doing He said, no, I want a girl who can chop money. A girl who can chop money. So he asked him, why, do, why are you looking for a girl who can chop money? He said, a girl who they chop money, it they motivate me, make I find more money. <laughs> Not a man who is giving you chop money and he's counting the money. Look, one of my senior brothers said, when he's counting, he has, since I knew him, since I knew him, he has never made a mistake with money before. As in that, you, you, like you are paying somebody and you overpay the person with one note. Since I knew him, I became a child that I can see. I have made mistakes, my other brothers have made, but he in particular, never. Because he counts the money from the top, he holds the top. Does this take, but does it take, does it take, never make a mistake. Some of those men, they are stingy men. Iron-fisted men. May God bless you with a liberal man in the name of Jesus. And anybody whose marriage is tough, God is pouring engine oil into the engine. He is servicing the engine this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, shout a bigger amen. It's a good place to clap your hands together for Jesus. So this morning as I close, understand that when you pay your tithe, it guarantees God's presence with you. And when God is, when God is with you, number one, he will lead you. He will lead you to the right people, lead you to the right place at the right time. Number two, he will give you what? Joy. He will bless you with joy. And then number three, he will bless you with favor and when the favor of the Lord is upon you accommodation will never be a problem and then uh, what's, the, what's the next one a job will also never be a problem jobs will be chasing you and then number three was the third one a good home a good family will also never leave you in Proverbs 19 14 says Proverbs 19 14 says a house is an inheritance of a father houses an inheritance of a father it says a good wife is from the Lord. So a good family, it comes from God. Look, desire, desire that God will give you a very peaceful home because with a peaceful home, you can do many great things. With a joyful home, you can do many great things. When you are with a nagging wife, complaining all the time, nothing ever makes her happy, and you are with a man who is always angry, always hot, and uh, whatever, always giving you pressure, you, you cannot have joy. You, you can't move on. Even when God has given you joy, there will be no joy in the house. And so let these blessings, let these things that we have heard this morning be our strongest desire that the presence of God will be with us as we tithe. 
people, these things I have mentioned, there is no man that can give them to you, but God can drop them to you. Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and they added no sorrow to it. So, tithing works mysteriously. So, next week, I'll continue from there. Stand to your feet and let's pray. You've been blessed? Lift up your hands to Jesus and begin to pray and tell God that God, I need your presence. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Tell God that God, I need your presence to be with me. Show yourself strong on my behalf. 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 Tell God that God, I need you. I need you. Some of you are dry. There is no joy. There is no fulfillment. There is an emptiness in your heart. Suddenly you have become a calculator. Always calculating. And you are finding it difficult to make ends meet. Why not get back into the favor of the Lord? Which is, which is a guarantee in the presence of God. Pray to God today and tell God that God, I need your favor. I need your favor. I need your favor. Today receive the favor, the favor of the Lord. Receive the faithfulness of God. Let the presence of God be manifest to you everywhere you go. May you never lack a good thing in the name of Jesus. Let God lead you. Let God give you joy. And let his favor never depart from your life. I heal all sicknesses this morning. Maybe this morning you have heard the word of God. You don't know Jesus as your Lord, the personal Savior. Or you are watching online. You don't know Jesus as your Lord, the personal Savior. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming to die for me. I confess I am a sinner. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart. Be my master. Be my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen.